Hi there, it's Jeff here with a, a diagram for students taking Edexcel Economics this year. Now on section A, there are diagrams, each worth four marks, which you have to draw. So here's a challenge if you want to have a go at uh, doing some practice. So we've got five diagrams for you, none of which have been tested so far on previous exam papers. Uh, when you're ready, just press the pause button, have a go at drawing the diagram for a couple of minutes or so, and then we'll walk through the answers together. The first one is subsidies for electric vehicle manufacturers. So we're asked to draw a supply and demand diagram to show the likely microeconomic effects of a government subsidy offered to EV manufacturers. So press the pause button, have a go at the diagram, and then we'll walk through it together. So here we go, here's the diagram. Well, let's draw our original supply and demand curves, S1 and D1. So the equilibrium price is P1 with a subsidy uh, that reduces the cost of the producers, effectively a factor input subsidy. So the supply curve shifts outwards to S2 with the subsidy. Other things being the same, the price would fall from P2 to Q2. So a fall in the equilibrium price for electric vehicles. Manufacturers are willing and able to lower the price because they know that they get the subsidy on top. So the price the manufacturers get is P3, uh, but the price the consumer pays is P2. And that will be perfectly fine for a four mark diagram showing the effect of a subsidy. Now, uh, linking to the exams, a subsidy for producers, manufacturers lowers their costs and causes an outward shift of supply. Sometimes governments offer direct subsidy payments to consumers. And that can have the effect of causing an outward shift of demand. So look carefully to see what the stimulus and the stem is in the question. Here's number two, externalities from water pollution. Water pollution, of course, comes from various sources, including untreated human wastewater, industrial waste and agricultural runoff. And we're going to focus on water pollution from production. In 2024, only a small percentage of rivers and lakes in England achieved good ecological status. Here's our challenge. Draw an externalities diagram to show the likely impact of water pollution on economic and social welfare. My focus here would be on water pollution from industry and from agricultural runoff farming. So press the pause button, have a go at the diagram, and then just press play again when you want, when to, when you want to uh, walk through the answer. So we're going to assume there are no externalities from consumption, so private benefit and social benefit are the same. There's the marginal private cost of supply. But I'm going to assume here that there are non-linear externalities. In other words, as the scale of output and water pollution gets worse, the external cost increases. So marginal social cost is marginal private cost plus marginal external cost. The private equilibrium is where private cost and benefits intersect at price P1 output Q1. But at that output, there is a significant marginal external cost, which the market is not taking account of. The social optimum is lower at price P2 output Q2. And as a result, there is a market failure uh, with a deadweight welfare loss of area A, B, C. So that's the diagram to draw when you are drawing negative externalities from production. Externalities from water pollution, rivers, beaches, tributaries, it's obviously a very topical, it's a huge policy issue. Water companies face increasing fines for pollution. There is huge pressure for multi-billion pound investment in infrastructure, including sewage treatments. Then the issue becomes who pays? To what extent can water companies be allowed by the regulator, off what, to increase bills for households to pay for, to fund the infrastructure? Or is the, does the money come out of company profits in, over, in the long term? Here's number three. Let's turn our attention now to the labour market. And this is a question about work visas. In 2020, the UK government brought in the skilled work visa route for people applying to work in the UK. And there's been a big rise in, in visas. In 2024, just over 600,000 work visas were granted, a big rise on previous years. In some occupations, we're told this has helped to resolve labour shortages at time of rising demand for people. For example, in health and social care. So we're asked to draw a labour market diagram to show the likely impact of an increase in work visas on wages and employment in an occupation such as health care. So here's our labour supply and here's our labour demand with an equilibrium wage of W1 and employment E1. 
Now we're told there's increasing demand for people. There certainly is. There's growing demand, for example, for people to work in uh, adult social care and health care. In theory, of course, if demand goes up and labour supply is inelastic, that drives wages up. But an increase in work visas causes an outward shift in the labour supply curve, which in theory helps to reduce labour shortages, allowing more people to be employed E3 at the original wage W1. In terms of linking to the exams, certain sectors in the UK, particularly health and social care, building, hospitality, have experienced persistent labour shortages. So the government is hoping to use the work visa programme to fill these gaps with skilled international workers, ensuring that essential services and industries operate efficiently. The evidence, by the way, is that skilled migrants tend to be of working age, obviously, but on average they make a net positive fiscal contribution to the government. In other words, they pay in more in tax than they take out in welfare benefits. Here's a great question. The effect of a rise in fixed costs for businesses. Here's the stem. Rising interest rates directly increase a firm's fixed costs by making borrowing more expensive, potentially leading to higher debt servicing costs, lower profits and strained cash flow. Here, we're challenges, here are the challenges to complete the diagram by showing the effect of a rise in fixed costs on output, price and profit for this firm. So we've had the diagram partially completed for us. So assume the firm is a profit maximizer. Can you complete the diagram to show the effect of a rise in fixed costs? Press the pause button, have a go, and then just press play when you want to walk through the answer. So a profit maximizing firm initially prices at P1 with an output of Q1. Uh, and the cost is C1, so there's the total profit shown there. Now, a rise in fixed costs causes an upward shift in AC, but only that. There's no change in marginal costs. Marginal costs are not affected by fixed costs. So as a result, the output will stay the same, the price will stay the same, but the cost goes up from C1 to C2, reducing the level of profit. In theory, a rise in fixed costs does not change the profit maximising price and output. But of course, you can challenge this. Most firms do not profit maximise. They have many other objectives, satisficing, revenue and sales max and so on. So they may not actually be at the profit maximising price at all. Be prepared to challenge assumptions in your essays. Here's our fifth and final diagram challenge. Do have a go. It's about the impact of an increase in the minimum wage. From April 1st, the UK living wage will rise to £12.21 per hour for adult workers and £10 an hour for those aged 18 to 20. Draw a diagram showing the effect of an increase in the national living wage for an occupation of your choice. Well, I've chosen retail workers, so there's our Y and X axis labelled. Have a go at drawing this diagram, please. Press the pause button and then just press play when you want to, when you want to walk through the answer. Here's our initial labour demand and labour supply curves. The minimum wage is set at MW1. Uh, employment falls to E2 and the number of people actively looking for work is E1. So an increase in the minimum wage to MW2, £12.21 an hour, will again potentially cause a fall in employment and a further expansion of labour supply. So that's how to draw the diagram. Now, this is posing many challenges for businesses, particularly with low profit margins. Uh, but whilst there are concerns about potential job losses, and there are, the overall impact on unemployment will depend on other factors, including businesses' ability to adapt, potential productivity gains, and the wider economic environment, including things like interest, set, interest rates set by the Bank of England. Quick reminder, of course, you don't have to show this in the four marker, that the employment effect of a minimum wage does depend on the wage elasticity of demand for labour. In this situation, the increase in minimum wage from MW1 to MW2 causes quite a big fall in employment. But if labour demand is wage inelastic, you get a much smaller fall in employment. Well done if you did all five, diag for five diagrams. Keep practising these diagrams. Four marks to draw a diagram, four marks to complete a diagram. If you can get these done accurately and well in less than four minutes, that will make a big difference to your exam score. Thanks for joining in. Stay safe. See you soon.